Welcome back to another episode of What The Tech, where in this video, we're going to answer the question of what is the difference between Office 365 and Microsoft 365? Why? Well, because in April 2020, Microsoft changed it all again. So I'm making this video again. Yeah. Office 365 is one of the most widely used platforms in business today. For those who have braved and embraced cloud computing and, well, pandemic, who hasn't embraced it by now? You dinosaurs. But you may already be aware that I have made a video about Office 365 versus Microsoft 365 right here on this channel, which I'll link to in the description below. And if you're new around here, then maybe consider hitting that subscribe button to subscribe to the channel. Massively appreciated. But as Microsoft always does, they've moved the goalposts. So it's time to reshoot this whole video and explain what the new difference is between Office 365 and Microsoft 365 and what they're all about. First of all, what is Office 365? Well, in April this year, the range of products and services known as Office 365 no longer exists. That's right, Office 365 is nothing. Nada. The end. That's all for today. Lovely to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> Why did they do this, I hear you ask? Personally, I think it's a way of Microsoft consolidating a lot of their different offerings, which pretty much contain the same things in them. And also because it solves that issue that I repeatedly have when I speak to people and ask, are you in Office 365? Why, yes. Yes, of course we are. Cool. Which parts are you using? Parts? Well, the Office. Office 365, right? It's the Office software. You know, um, Office, Outlook, Word, Excel. Oh, crap. Because... Yes, Office 365 has much, much more than just Office. It also has cloud storage, email, collaboration, Microsoft Teams, Planner, bookings, meetings, and a whole lot more than I care to go through right now because there are just far too many. So what's left? What is Microsoft 365 now? Microsoft 365 is now the big top level name for all of Microsoft's cloud services, with the exception of Microsoft Azure. Let's Let's not complicate this anymore. First, for home use. Well, you have Microsoft 365 Personal, which comes in at $59.99 per year. This gives one person all of the Office apps as well as OneDrive, Skype, and one terabyte of OneDrive and an email account. For family, you can pay $79.99 and get those same things for up to six people for that one price. When we look at the business plans, this is where it gets really... <laughs> Really complicated. I kid. Firstly, Microsoft 365 apps. This one is the one for you if all you need is Office. You just want Word, Outlook, Excel, PowerPoint, Publisher, Access. Oh, and they'll also throw in OneDrive 2 for £7.90 per user per month. Next up is Microsoft 365 Business Basic, which is £3.80 per user per month. Yeah, affordable am I? In Office 365 Business Basic, you get none of the desktop apps, but you do get a cut down web version, which nobody really uses, to be honest. What you do get, though, is Microsoft Exchange, which is a business class email system, one terabyte of OneDrive cloud storage, Microsoft SharePoint, which is like a document storage, collaboration, intranet, system y thing. That in itself is a huge product. But you also get Microsoft Teams because, well, video calls anybody? Notably missing services here are the advanced threat protection, which adds an extra level of security to protect against hacks, attacks, ransomware, all of that dodgy stuff. So on this plan, you will either need to subscribe to the service separately, which starts at £1.51 per user per month, or look at or look at an alternative security platform. You also miss out on some of the additional 365 web apps, such as Bookings and Mile IQ, which can be handy to track your business mileage or schedule meetings without the back and forth like calendar tennis. Up to the next level, we have the Microsoft 365 Business Standard Plan, which is at £9.40 per user per month, which is basically the same as the 365 Business Basic Plan. Just now you have the full Office desktop suite of applications. But, 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 you also get the additional apps such as Bookings and Mile IQ, but you don't, but, 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 don't get the advanced threat protection. But as more buts, I like big <laughs> as a business, what you're missing out on here is the really cool stuff, which you'll only get in the next and final plan, the Microsoft 365 Business Premium Plan at £15.10 per user per month. With this, you get 
everything we've already mentioned, but you also get some insanely great ways to monitor, manage, and secure your business. Advanced threat protection is now included, which adds that extra layer of security around targeted attacks, hacks, phishing, ransomware, and many other risks we see day in, day out. Though, how good the protection is will be fairly subjective depending on who you speak to. Personally, I favor the likes of Mimecast's email protection service as I've just personally found it to be more reliable. Potatoes, tomatoes, and on to the clever stuff, the stuff that is really, really worth upgrading to the 365 Business Premium Plan. With, bith, with, bith, 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 with the Microsoft 365 Business Premium Plan, you get their advanced management solutions, which just allow you to do things like configure and deploy security settings, Windows updates, patches, even entire applications 100% remotely and from anywhere in the world with an internet connection. You can also apply security policies to protect your business devices and stop people from getting in and changing all of those settings they shouldn't. Basically, it's like the old version of group policy for those techie people. And the really cool thing here is autopilot. Not that Tesla autopilot thing that isn't actually an autopilot, but using autopilot, you can ship a new computer to your staff. All they need to do is unbox the thing, switch it on, sign in using their company account, and the machine will hook itself into Microsoft 365 and basically just configure itself. It deploys all of the applications you need and basically saves you a ton of time setting up all of those new computers. This one is basically the plan to go for if you no longer have a server in your office because the services in this plan will replace all of the missing services you get with having a server. Things like centralized logons, group policy, and just overall control of your network. And those are the differences between the not Office 365, because that doesn't exist anymore, and Microsoft 365, which does exist. And it's the new name for everything when it comes to Microsoft Cloud Services. I have a cat on me. I'm here, Walt. You can go with the video today. It's on a dance, dance, dance. It's actually pretty simple. If you just want Office, then get 365 apps for like £7.90 per month. If you don't need the apps, but want the email, the storage, and Microsoft Teams, then go for the basic at £3.80. If you want all of that, but you still want the Office software, then it's business standard at £9.40. Or if you have a bigger business, or are getting rid of, or have already gotten rid of uh, your big, expensive, noisy server from your own offices, then Business Premium is the one to go for at £15.10. After watching this video, I'd highly recommend watching this video about backing up your Office 365 data. It is still very much valid today. If you are using Office 365, then your data is not being backed up by Microsoft. So just please take note of that. Otherwise, thank you kindly for your time. I hope that answered your questions on what Office or Microsoft 365 exactly is. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more What The Tech. And I look forward to seeing your smiling faces once again. Thank you. Bye-bye.